Oh, what's going on, MZ here, and welcome back to some more Starfield. So we're back with another tips and tricks today. We're going to be talking about base power and storage connections and things like that. So we're going to talk about how to get your storages connected up, how to get power connected up, how to get machines connected up, so everything's running the way you want it to. We're going to talk about the um, we're going to talk about the transfer pads, the uh, between the same system we're gonna talk about this guy we're gonna talk about all kinds of stuff so hopefully you guys know if you do like subscribe all the fun things so i have some things laid out here as a demonstration purposes and also because i don't have enough resources to like finish absolutely everything that i want to do but it's an ongoing project so let's start off with the uh, i think you know what let's start off with talking about this guy because this guy's really simple here uh if we go into actually check this out uh, we got a delivery coming in right now. How cool. I think this is obviously, honestly, one of the coolest platforms. Just because this guy comes in, drops stuff off, and then dips out. Like, how cool is that? I don't I don't know. It doesn't cost us anything. We don't do anything. But it makes the base feel alive because it makes it feel like, oh, somebody's dropping off a load of uh, aluminum for us. They are. They absolutely are. So um, let's talk about this for a just a second. It's super easy. Basically, what we do is uh, you build one of these guys. This is the cargo link. If you go into the the uh, the tab here, um, it is going to be it's going to be this first one right here um, for within the same system. Now the uh, the intra system one, uh, I haven't got to that one yet. I know you're going to fill it with helium for or with H3, so we haven't got to that. I imagine it's going to work exactly the same, except you're going to, have to put H3 in it in order to transfer the resources. Now, I do have a question about this one that I don't know yet, and I want, I'm just gonna put it out there. So if you guys know, leave a comment down below. But um, basically, you hook this up, there's a red box and a green box. Red is output, green is input. Basically what happens is if I wanted to, I could set up a miner like this one right here. And essentially, I could hit uh, mouse three on it, or mouse two and bring it over here and I can connect it to this side. So the red, and that means it's gonna send the iron out. It's gonna send it away. Red is out, green is in, okay? It's gonna send it away. However, what you can do and what I would recommend doing first is hooking it to a storage container and then from the storage container, hooking it out here. Now, if you're going to do it that way, make sure that storage container is only hooked up to that one resource, because if it's hooked up, how I'm going to show you here in a little bit, you're gonna have, you're gonna be sending everything out. So um, if you are going to be doing this or you're gonna be manufacturing or something like that, make sure your storages are individual, okay? So when, by default, they are individual. They are not connected to anything else. So right now, these storages right here, they are not connected to anything. They are by themselves. They're not hooked up to anything. These ones are. And uh, I want to talk about why you do want to do it this way and why you don't want to do it this way. So um, that basically wraps up this guy. Now, uh, hold on. Whoop. The last little bit with this station, I'm just going to make it quick, is uh, you have to connect it in order for it to start working. So you're going to just come over here to this system right here. And as long as you're within the same system, you're going to see another outpost. So, like this is my other outpost. Basically, I just click this button right here. It makes a green link and that's it. That's all it does. That's it. And it just tells you, it's like, what's going to tell you what's going to come in. It's, it's, that's it. <laughs> you don't do anything else. You just literally just click it and it's good. So once you do that, you're obviously going to want some storage and let's talk about the storage. Let's talk about the storage connections and how these things kind of work. Um, and I'm also going to talk about this guy. So this and this for the sake of this, we're going to say they're about the same. Okay. The only difference is instead of things automatically coming in here from a ship, you're going to be putting things in here. So you're going to go over here. You can uh, hold menu or transfer. But what you're going to want to do is transfer container. So we're on the transfer container right now. Um, same thing that, as always, you can go to your inventory. We can put inventory items in here if we want to or the ship. So I want to go to the frontier. So the frontier is in here. Now, let's say I had some resources that I wanted to throw in here. Okay. Let's say I have um, these chlor sands I want to throw in there. I'm going to confirm that um, a coffee bag. No, let's do uh, a calm relay. Let's just I'm going to just do some random stuff. And the reason I'm going to do random stuff is kind of show you uh, what works and what doesn't. So, um, and we'll throw some hallucinogen. Okay, cool. So I have some items in this guy. Now, how this works is however you have it connected, the output, right? It's going to output to a container. So once you put it in here, it's going to say, Hey, I need to go to a container. Now there are four different types of containers in the game. There is gas type containers, which is this one. 
storage gas there is solids uh storage solids containers right there liquid obviously liquids and then this is a warehouse so this is a warehouse small now there's probably larger ones i don't have them unlocked yet because you know i don't um this is a small warehouse so this is going to fill in with i don't even know why it says it's at 11 percent right now that is so weird <laughs> uh there's nothing in it this is zero percent that one's at 11. uh this one says three there's nothing in here well anyways i don't know what's going on with that anyways those can only hold those hold those type of items so if i go back over here you're gonna see all of those things are still in here um and the reason for that is because these guys are full well these aren't full these can only hold uh raw like like raw resources like you know your iron your cobalt uranium silver tantalum stuff that looks like rocks <laughs> if it looks like a rock it can go in here okay now if it's a manufactured item so like the um the manifolds the adaptive frames those can go into your warehouse so easy enough right okay so let's say i want all of these to get stored into here because i'm actually i'm actually in the process of redoing this a little bit so this over here is actually my giant store yard now when it comes to this i'm going to tell you here in a second actually let's just go ahead let's get into this let's open up our mode let's toggle our view because this view is terrible and we're going to go ahead and connect to here. We're going to connect to here. And we're going to connect to here. And then we're going to connect to the final one. Okay. That's all of our items. That's all four different types of resources. So how these work is they're they're like overflowative, I guess you could say. Well, kind of. I have noticed that sometimes things will kind of linger in here but as you can see all those items now went in here so we have gases in here we have fluorine we've got um there's no stalled storage in there because i didn't put any in there uh we got the chlorosanes and then what do we have in here we have a control rods so fantastic now so let's go ahead and let's get back into the other view here and let's go into our containers all right so we have our transfer container but then we have stores so we now look at how these connect because this is this was tripping me out and I was like why won't this connect because I wanted to connect to this side it won't do it right if you look at the storage there is a front and it says right on there actually let me just get out of here so I can show you the fronts there is a front it says right here it has it has like a connection point and it shows like a gauge and it says support point well this one says support point this one says warning keep clear authorized personnel it has like a connection point right here same thing with this side so you cannot attach things to this side or this side of the container only on the sides and the top so it's the same with all of these so that is if depending on how you want your storage yard you need to keep that in mind because my other storage yard see how it's running the other way that's because my storage fronts are all right here so that is one thing i was trying to figure out we got to figure it out and that's how that works <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's add a couple containers uh because i want to show you how we connect multiple containers to uh to one another let's go ahead and let's do uh, i feel like i have a decent amount of liquid so let's go ahead and let's throw another liquid and you know what let's just do one of let's just do uh some more solids too so we'll go ahead and do a solid container there okay so now i have all these containers right cool and we have our connection points going in from here to these right but they're only running into that front container because you connected it doesn't do absolutely anything it doesn't it doesn't transfer anything it does absolutely nothing so what you need to do if you want to transfer this is you need to go into here you need to now when you do this i'm gonna tell you right now when you do this i don't know how to undo it it's hard it's hard to undo it i don't know how to undo it um because normally you hover over this connection point and but as you can see like it's hard to hit the connection point so as you connect to this one so create output link to this container connected create output link to this container basically you are connecting these all to one another now what this does and how this acts is like a funnel so this is the topmost funnel this will always be the topmost funnel everything you add will be underneath of it so everything that goes into here will try to funnel into this one so on and so forth so they will always try to fill up the bottom before they fill up this top one so it goes in here it filters all the way down and there's a reason you want that there's a reason that that's key for us same thing with these so basically i want to go ahead and make a connection connected to there so let's go ahead and let's pop out of here and now well these will all still look like that because there's none in there <laughs> uh, but what we're going to do there the reason i want to do that is because when it comes to manufacturing so we're going to talk about manufacturing here in a second but i want to go ahead and i want to pull some stuff out of here so like if example right we've got this container right here it's got a whole bunch of stuff in it 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull that out of there. I'm going to pull a whole bunch of stuff out of here. Uh, I'm going to pull a whole bunch of stuff out of here, right? My inventory is like way full now. But what I actually want to do is uh, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go into here and I'm actually going to delete the container line going from here and from here because I this side was my first side that I was playing with and I got things figured out. So I don't want those over there. I want them. I want them over here. I want this is my main storage yard. We're going to be storing it out this way. We're going to run out this way and we can also stack on top of each other. So uh, let's go ahead and let's pop out of here and then let's go into where is it at? That's right. <laughs> so we're going to go into here and I'm going to transfer everything from my inventory. So I'm going to go to my inventory. I'm going to go to resources and basically I'm just going to go ahead and throw everything in here that I can and I'm hoping that it'll all go in there. If it won't, it'll say, oh, this container is full and hopefully we'll be able to figure it out. Okay, containers at max capacity. So it's going back out. Let's give it a second because I'm not 100% sure if it takes a second for these things to go down, but you're going to notice that things are starting to go into here and they're going to fill up. Now, I don't know how I, I think it takes a little bit of time. I'm not sure how it like I said, I'm not 100% sure how it works. Um, all I know is that you it it funnels down <laughs> somehow it funnels down. So those containers were super full. See, now it shows those, those ones over there is empty and these ones is full. I'm not again. I'm not 100% sure how this works. Um, So like these items in here. Oh, I know how that works. OK, so those items, right? They're full. Um, So what we need to do, the reason that they're full. I'm sorry. I did realize this and I forgot. And now they're empty. OK, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they just took a minute to get over here. So now I can fill it up again. It just takes, sometimes it just takes a minute for them to, to sort their things out, apparently. So let me go back in my inventory. Let me grab my uh, resources again, and we're going to continue on. So like I said, cobalt rocks go into the storage, the, the, the solid storage. I think so do like some bones and stuff like that. So, but that is all now going into, see that went immediately. And it's trying to fill up these containers first. So it's trying to go whoop and it's trying to throw everything into this container. So there's all of that stuff in there. This is all in here. Uh, there's some weird just hanging out things. I don't know. Um, there's still things to be worked out here. <laughs> but as you can see, we have different gases in here. So like that's 87% full. That's fantastic. How's this thing looking? This is 33% uh, full. So everything went in there now. Okay, cool. We got that figured out. So you understand. Boom. This goes to there. This goes to these, right? All right. Cool. Everybody's on the same page. Hopefully, if you're not, maybe rewatch that. And I'm sorry. I'm trying to explain it the best I can, the easiest I can. Now, let's get into the manufacturing because this is where also things can get a little bit interesting. So if I go into Outpost, we go back into our view. We hit tab again. Okay. So we understand how. See, I'm breaking these connections. I'm not even sure, like, how. Honestly, not even sure how to break these connections. Because, like, I can't even. The connection is so small in there. I don't know how to break the connection. I guess you could just deconstruct it, but like, there's no way for me to like really get to it. So I don't know if you have a, if you, if you have an idea, leave a comment down below. Now let's talk about manufacturing because I obviously have a manufacturer right here. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this guy and I'm going to delete this guy if I can get to it. All right. So now we want to do some manufacturing. So this is our dump storage. This is basically where we're storing everything. And obviously when it comes to um, when it comes to, to Starfield, you only have so much storage you can put in your in your ship. And you honestly, you don't need necessarily that much storage in your ship. Um, you need it at a base for the most part, but it takes a lot to get going. Once you get the, once you get your base up and running, you're good. So I'm obviously I'm going to try to jump as much storage of raw materials in my base that I don't actively use, you know, like all the resources, all that stuff. It's going to stay here. So if I want to do any research, if I want to do any building, if I want to do anything, I can do it here or I can take it here from here and take it to wherever I need to go. So let's get into manufacturing because one of the most important things that you may need to manufacture is actually uh, some like very basic items. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull out a simple fabricator. Now, these fabricators are kind of loud and obnoxious and where you do this kind of depends. So what I want to actually do is I'm trying to figure out where I want this to actually run at. I think I'm actually, you know what? I'll just leave it right here. It'll be fine. Um, where's our screen at? Okay. So our screen is on this side. So I don't like that. I'm going to go ahead and swap and make the screen go on this side. 
Yeah, that looks better. Okay. Also, if you want a little tip with, with the base building and trying to get things lined up, if you try to basically line yourself up, your camera so you're perpendicular with whatever you're building, and you swap it, it'll always, it'll try to keep that same angle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place this here. Now I could go ahead and place some more down, but I don't really care right now because I'm only going to start working on one thing. And then I'm also going to place a, um, a powered switch and that'll become, you'll see a reason here in a second. So there's those. All right. So now that we have that, this guy wants iron and aluminum because it's producing adaptive frames. Now to get those resources to this, you need to connect it from the end container, whatever container is your last container. You can't connect it from here because like I said, everything's funneling down. You want it at the bottom, absolute bottom of the, of, of the barrel, unless for some reason you don't want to use your resources to make a resource, which I could completely understand. Um, but that's also why we have a switch and I'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and create an output link from this container to this fabricator deal right here create the link and then what i want to do so that is uh here let's go ahead and let's just actually look at it real quick so you can see what's going on here so now that i did that it is going to have uh well okay i didn't <laughs> iron and aluminum <laughs> hold on let's go over here let's grab some iron and aluminum i also don't know why these containers aren't filling up not really sure but i'm gonna go through and grab all of this out of here we're going to delete these here in a second anyway, so I, I really don't care. But I'm actually going to go ahead and put these in the transfer deal. So that way um, I don't have to worry about it. And then we're going to go to inventory resources and we're going to just dump everything. Now, I'm hoping everything can fit in there, but I might not. It cannot. Okay. And the reason for that. Oh, no. Should be good now. Yeah, it just takes a second. So like when you're loading it up. All right. And then we come out and then it goes back in. Okay, cool. So now it's going to get thrown in there. So now, now that I have all that thrown in there, this is going to show all of the iron and aluminum that I have in all of those containers. So 37 and 60. Okay, cool. And it's, it's, it's already started. It's already making this. Now that's where I had an issue. I was like, okay, well, I don't want this thing running all the time. How do I get this to shut off? Because I went into the menu. There's nowhere to like, you know, stop or anything like that. So what you have to do, and this doesn't, this is not on if you, uh, this is not on this menu. So if you go into this menu, you go into here, you go into tab, this, there's no like wiring thing. It doesn't say like, oh, make connection point or anything like that. What you actually have to do is you have to be in normal mode. And, uh, what you're going to do is hold E it's going to bring up this. And then you have to go to wire. I want to wire it to the switch right here. And then you need to go to a power source. So this power source produces six power. These only produce four. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use this power right here. I'm going to activate. I'm going to wire to the switch. And then what I can do now is I can pull the switch and this will stop making those items. So it's like if I decide that I need, hey, I need more um, adaptive frames. I can come over here. I can hit the switch and it'll start making them now. Let's talk about the outputs and then the other things. So if you go into this machine and you see, so you have adaptive frame, you have uh, the autistic manifold, um, autentic, it's not autistic. It's on, on ten I don't know. Um, it has some other things. So like reactive gauge, calm relay, uh, reactive gauge is needed for that one, but you can make reactive gauges out of aluminum and copper. So this is where things can get a little finicky. Um, and this is where you kind of have to decide what you want to do. Now, what I want to do is, uh, for this machine, I'm going to set up each, each machine individually. So this machine only needs iron and aluminum. So I'm only going to have it coming off of those, those storages that have them. If you wanted to say, have this, you would obviously need to have it going off of solid. And you'd also have to have it going off of a warehouse. Now, these are the solid things and the solid things are basic things. Um, so like your basic resources, but the warehouse is where it's going to store crafted items. So uh, this is where the the frames are the adaptive frames. They would end up going here. So what you can do, and like you said, this is just really depends on what you want to do because it'll just chew right through all your resources is uh, what I would recommend. You could connect this back to your main storage. And uh, actually, if we pull up the other menu, it'll be easier to kind of talk about what I'm talking about here. You could put the output on this guy to this warehouse. And if you had a chain of them, you could pull from the end to your next machine, so on and so forth. However, 
to me i don't like that i don't really like the whole idea of like having a whole because you would be able to ha eventually have a whole warehouse full of one resource you know what i'm saying so like a whole warehouse full of like one thing would just would not be good so what i want to do is i'm actually gonna go through here and i'm gonna delete these guys actually i need to delete all these anyways okay so what I want to do myself is I actually want to go ahead and create an area of um, separate individual warehouses for each item. And then depending on what I need, I can connect those items. So this is our main warehousing area right here. And I want to make I'm going to make another smaller one. I think right over here. So let's go ahead. Let's grab a uh, let's grab a warehouse. Now I need to make sure that this is not the front storage. Okay. So the percentage is right there. That's fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and move it right here. I'm going to place that down because now they're going to stack next to each other, which is fine. So I'm going to place an, uh, oh, missing resources. Wow. Okay. I guess I'm only building one. <laughs> That's it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the output of this guy to here, create output link. So now what's going to happen is those adaptive frames that this makes are going to go into this storage. So this storage is going to have adaptive frames. And then when I need to make something that requires adaptive frames for another machine, I'm going to have this be an input for that next machine, if that makes any sense. So that way I'm not bringing this item back into this warehousing system if that makes sense these are like the dump systems this is the stuff you pick up while you're gone if you happen to have some adaptive frames in there that's fantastic um but if you don't then you can go ahead and queue up some to be made now when you are building stuff it pulls from all of your storages that you have so like if i go into build mode right and i need uh, a warehouse i need titanium i don't have titanium in anywhere on these anywhere like none uh, if I need gas, it's, it's pulling from everything. It's pulling from my ship. It's pulling from the storages. It's pulling from the base. It's pulling from absolutely everything. Um, one thing I do actually need to do, though, because I forgot, is we actually need to go ahead and get uh, this connection. Okay, there we go. Create output link. I need to go ahead and create an output link to... I wonder if I can connect it to this guy. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to connect this output link to this because then it will drop off whatever resource that comes in here into this and then from in here into this if that makes sense that way i don't have to make four lines from this guy going over here just in case we have any other outputs you know what i'm saying um so yeah there's that now what this also will allow me to do is i know i'm, I'm long-winded here this is a longer video than i was and i was expecting but there's like a lot going on here uh and it took a little bit to figure out the now the the next thing that we could do which would also make this even better is once we got the uh, once you get your interstellar pad where is it at uh the inter system link you can also connect the output to um like we could place this down actually i could place it down right now but i'm not going to because i just i don't i don't i'm not gonna cross that bridge yet we're not there yet i'm not doing it yet <laughs> um but we could connect that to this guy as well and the reason you'd want to do that is because let's say in a different system you set up the other side of that right so like, let's just say that my aluminum base, right? Let's say I, you know what? I just, I need to dump some stuff off there and I don't want to come all the way here to do it. I can dump that stuff off into this, into the output container. Whatever I put in the output container will come here. So let's say I'm in a different system. I could stop at my base. I can throw it into my output container. And if I have everything done properly, it will come back here and then get sorted into this. So this right here is going to be my main base. This is going to be my main manufacturing base, my main storage base. Everything will come back here. So, um, like I said, like, let's pretend this is my aluminum base. I have an aluminum extractor going into this and that's all I have going in there. But let's say I stop there for some reason, or like I'm closer to there or I'm in a different system. Let's say I have the interstellar stuff set up. I can drop everything into that container and then a ship will come it'll grab it and it will take it away to back to here to this system to then get sorted and put into here so hopefully that makes sense now the other thing is when you uh when you i can't get any closer anymore i don't know why <laughs> when you uh expand your storage you need to make sure you change your lines here so like once if i add more of uh if i add more of these containers out this way or I start double stacking them. I need to make sure that this line is on the final one, is on the last one. I can't get any closer. I don't know what the heck's going on here. 
Um, I need to make sure it's on the final one. Actually, this might be the way to disconnect these. Is there any way to do this? Hmm. See, that's what I was a little bit worried about. Unless you could maybe create output link and then delete an output link. I'm not 100% sure. So, um, yeah, you need to make sure you move that. But that, I think, I think I've covered everything. We've got um, wiring. We've got inputs and outputs. We've got basically how you unload your ship and um, how you fill up your containers. And like I said, the reason you want to do this is because um, let's go ahead and pop out of here. Let's go to my ship. Uh, my ship storage is at 779 of 1260. I don't want, I don't want a bunch of rocks and stuff sitting on my ship. I have no, has absolutely no need for it. And honestly, now, once you get a base set up like this, you honestly probably don't even have a need for that large of a cargo ship, unless you're just running cargo, at which point I would make a dedicated only cargo ship like that thing right there that only does cargo. Um, and then be running cargo so like actually my frontier that i have set up for this i will probably end up removing some storage so that way we get a little bit better fuel mile like a little bit you know further space jumps stuff like that uh so yeah but the other thing that i want to talk about real quick and I, ju I just don't know it yet and this is gonna be my final thing is with the inter the intrasystem one where you have to have helium 3. the reason i'm worried about that is because i don't you can't you can't see how much is being brought but it's bringing like five aluminum at a time. <laughs> now, if you were paying for fuel every time that was coming over here, that would be annoying. You would want it. You'd want it to wait until it was full. And I don't know actually how to do that. And I don't know if there's a setting for it because I've gone into here and I don't see anything for like, oh, wait until, you know, wait until resources full or anything. I have no idea. So I'm, I don't know if that's maybe it might, maybe that's a default thing. But then you might not want to wait for it to be full. Like, what if it takes, what if it takes like, you know, a full two hours for a container to fill up and you're like, well, waiting for it. And you, you know what I mean? So there needs to be a setting there and I don't know how to do it yet. So if you know how to do it, leave a comment down below. Um, but hopefully that helps. And hopefully that figure you guys got, you know, stuff figured out here. Oh yeah, this was fun. It was fun figuring all this out, but I got it figured out and I think it's great. And I think it's fantastic. And honestly, uh, the manufacturing thing, I think it's really cool. I'm actually really excited to get into this. I want to set up machines for basically everything. Uh, so like this one machine right here can already make like what a, a dozen items, half dozen items. Um, I want to basically go ahead and get it all set up for it. So this is my main area, but we also need, I need all of the resources being brought here. So, um, I'm gonna have to go to other systems, set up other bases, get things brought here but it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really cool. Now, um, another thing that I, I do wanna mention is this thing right here says it can be hooked up to two sis or to two um, platforms. I have not tested what happens if I build a third platform in this system and I can, and I, if I try to connect that platform to this platform where this would have two incomings, instead of just one i don't know that that works i haven't i haven't tried tried that yet so stay tuned for that i'll i'll try to you know cover that in a future video but um i'm not sure so like if you have four if you have them all going to the same place i'm not sure how that works i'm not sure if it even does work because it says specifically two on there but i don't know so um yeah but thanks again for coming out have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and uh i think that's it i think i got everything wrapped up here oh also uh this adaptive frame machine this thing is going to absolutely be on because we need adaptive frames for absolutely everything so i'm going to leave that on until this storage right here is full um once this storage fills up that thing will stop and then the aluminum and iron will stop being used and then i'm probably also going to go ahead and get more iron and aluminum being made or being brought in because of that machine now sucking it all up <laughs> so yeah but leave a comment let me know what you think hopefully this helped and i am sorry this is a long-winded video but there was a lot of information to cover i think so yeah but thanks again for coming out have a wonderful day i'll see you in the next one bye everybody